I think it created a lot more anxiety. So I'm on Seeking, I'm on OkCupid, I'm on Facebook Dating, and I'm talking and texting and communicating with, I mean, 15, 16, 17 women. <laughs> yeah. at, at one time. At one time. Oh, my God. I oh, mean, yeah. And I'm getting an adrenaline hit. I'm yeah. getting this dopamine hit. I'm getting this excitement. I mean, it's a new drug that I've never even knew what was out there. And I'm just like, woo, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Here's your host, Marcus. Welcome to another episode of Secrets of a Sugar Daddy, the number one sugar dating podcast in Finland and the rest of the world, where we pull back the curtains on the good and the bad. And Kevin, I think it's shocking. The most shocking, shocking. stories. Of sugar dating. Yeah. The astonishing. Well, welcome, Lily. <laughs> Hello. Just pipe right in there. Jump right in. As usual. Kevin, where have you been? I've been around the world. You have been? Yeah. Yeah. I've been gone. Uh, I mean, I can't, I've been gone for six weeks. Yeah. And then I uh, came back. I've been back for a week and then I leave uh, next week. So, yeah. yeah. Business or pleasure? All business. All yeah. business? Yeah. Boo. As I was telling Marcus, the startup has started. The startup has started. All the things you'd hoped for, you're now getting. So you got to just run and catch it. Okay. Well, I've got a little startup that's about to kick in too. So we're going to see where that goes. We'll be mentioning that soon. We are recording in the plush studios of Pod Populi. And we have a guest today who also records here. And we want to thank Pod Populi for providing this location for us. And if you want to start your own podcast, they're a lot of fun. You can say whatever you want. Right, Lily? You can say anything you like. <laughs> so go you to can <laughs> even say profanity. Yeah, if you want. You don't even have to bleep it out. <laughs> you just don't want to offend anyone right. unless they deserve it. So if you want to start your own podcast, go to podpopulate.com. See if there's one in the city near you. And if there's not, email our good friend Brian Howie and tell him to open one up as soon as possible there. All right. Any other business? Oh, Kevin, you excited about our party coming up? I am super excited about okay. the party. Get your yeah. entries in now. We are running out of time. It's already September, and the party's in November. Yeah, it's right around the corner. It's going to come quickly. Now, we, we've expanded the party packages to 10. So you want to fill out that survey, go through it, send that in ASAP. We're actually going to start choosing winners this month. Going to let them know so they can make arrangements to get out of here. But we've expanded it from 8 to 10. Now, that is a private suite. To see Ricky Martin, Pitbull, and Enrique Iglesias. Also includes a pre-party at my house before the concert, transportation to and from, and three days and two nights of lodging. All free O charge. A good deal, huh, Kevin? Eight to ten. That's looks, or is that count? <laughs> <laughs> it's count. Listen, I want an announcement. I want to fly one of your winners out. You do? You're going yeah. to sponsor one of our winners? Domestic, you know, continental yeah. U.S. No, All right, right, there from, you go. Uh, Brussels. So one of you will be selected. What if we pick someone from Yugoslavia? <laughs> no, well, they have to reside in the United States. Continental. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. you Hawaiians. So one of you that reside in the United States will actually have your airfare paid for. Yeah. So and we'll you, let you know. You need to know go. how to thank a guy for a gift. That's there really you it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There you go. All right, so go to our website, secretsofasugardaddy.com, to enter there. All right, let's get to our guest. He is doesn't have a lot of time, and we have a lot of questions. So I want to introduce Todd, and he actually records here in the studio. He has a podcast called The Laundry List. His assistant actually reached out to us, said, you've done a little sugar dating. Welcome, Todd. A little Todd. sugar dating. Before we get into my story, I, I have a question. Why do you guys think you're number one in Finland? Because the... Charts just came out, and we were number one in Finland, in the sexuality division. Yeah. So why do you think you are? Oh, why? Yeah. Uh, the word Finnish? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't know. Why do you think? Why do I think? Yeah. I have no idea. I've not been to Finland. We have actually hit number one in Poland. Ten, Poland, Tanzania. I get. Yeah. I've been to Poland. I get it. Yeah. I have some friends that are very famous rock stars, and they tell me a lot about Poland. Really? So, 
Poland I get. Finland I thought was a more conservative, yeah. like, you know. Well, what about St. Kitts? Yeah, St. Kitts and Nevis. Kitts. We have been on, we have been number one there for like a year. Just yeah. solid. You can't discount St. Kitts. <laughs> Right there in the Caribbean. We're going to have to go to St. Kitts and yeah. Nevis soon. Take that, Joe Rogan. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. I do love St. Kitts. That's a gorgeous place. You know where that is? I've been there. Yeah. yeah. How is it? Great. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, Lily, set us up. Okay. We need to go do a podcast from St. Kitts since they are super fans there, apparently. We probably have like one fan that just downloads everything <laughs> every week. I don't know. What do you think the primary language is in St. Kitts? I don't know. Well, I think, it's, I think it's British and French. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. St. Kitts. Well, there's only seven people that live there, so half of them <laughs> listen to your podcast. Half right? of them speak English and could be guests on our show. All right, Todd, so tell us a little bit about your podcast. I was listening to The Dating One you just released a couple weeks ago. The one with Brian? or Oh, the one, yeah, more recent. Yeah, it was very recent. We did one with Brian Howey, a dating one that was excellent uh, this summer, early summer. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of good things on there that we talk about, actually, constantly on our podcast. And sugar dating is just dating with a twist, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're familiar with it. Tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of sure. your journey well, here. I got a podcast here. Like, like you said, Marcus, it's The Laundry List, and it's a podcast about relationships. And anything goes in relationships. It's not just romantic relationships. It's relationships with your parents, with your siblings, with your employer, coworkers, friends, neighbors. How do you interact and how do you have relationships and how to have better relationships in your life. And a lot of it comes from how you were raised, what kind of relationship you have with your parents. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of childhood trauma, a lot of childhood development work. We use programs like ACA and, and EMDR and other things to kind of help a lot of our listeners. And what are those for our listeners? Well, Adult Children of Alcoholics and Dysfunctional Homes, ACOA, okay. is one of the tools we use. And it's a big red book, probably 680 pages. We call it our Bible to how to deal with relationships and when you get triggered where's that coming from why are you getting triggered and it's usually has nothing to do with the other person usually has something to do in your past that is creating that fear and anxiety and panic everyone thinks it's that situation but it's not it's your response to that situation and it's usually you know, a program that's been replayed when typically you were younger okay so, very good yeah so you've been doing your podcast for about a year I think, you know, I just got the invoice for the next year. So I guess we just had our year a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, when I looked to see when it started, it was almost exactly to this day a year ago. Yeah. Well, when you released your first one. Yeah. We just paid for the second year. So yeah. I would have guessed that we're about a year and two weeks old is right. my guess. A yeah. year and three weeks. So what prompted you to reach out to us? You know, I had some experience with sugar dating and I have a lot of friends that have experienced with sugar dating. Good, bad. Good, bad, and the ugly. Everything. <laughs> a little bit of everything. So I just think it's an interesting topic. I think it's something that a lot of people don't know a lot about. I think there's a lot of assumptions out there. And I just love talking about relationships and romantic relationships, mm -hmm. sexual relationships, and how to create more sort of peace, harmony, joy, and happiness in your life. What's your status now? I'm married. Wise? You're married. Married. Trying to have kids. My wife's 35. You're in your 50s. 41, but thank you. <laughs> 41. <laughs> I yeah, just on my 41st birthday last week. Oh, I could have sworn. Open mouth, insert foot. Maybe, well, maybe it was his guest. No, I'm, I'm 55. I'm, I'm 56 next week. Oh, year. okay. Next I was not. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Double guy. I just, why are you so, why are you so red and all of a sudden? Because I was like, damn, how did I get that wrong? I just listened to his podcast and said he was in his 50s. The thing here, I don't know if there's any cross-pollination because, you know, in Seeking, I've not met any adult children of alcoholic parents, so I don't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I yeah. You could so, just have people read the laundry list, and when their head starts moving and they start crying, you're like, "Yep, I hit something here." All right. Yeah. So you're open to children at your age? Absolutely. You know, I am too. Yeah, I'm 55. Wow. And we've actually talked about it with a, one of my sugar babies I'm dating. We're not exclusive yet, but the subject has sure come up, Ooh, especially with said, our parents. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You said yet. <laughs> I mean, people are like, are you crazy having kids at 55? I'm like, I got a lot of love to give. I mean, ask my dog. I got a 16-year-old French bulldog. That dog, I'll tell you, this, my dad's got a lot of love to give. And that's what it's about. It doesn't matter if I'm 20, 30, 50, 70, Michael Douglas. I mean, if you got a lot of love to give and you like family and you like being around family, I mean, just do it. Okay, is this your first marriage? Second marriage. Okay. And I'm best friends with my ex-wife. 
Nice. Best friends. Children. Two boys. And my wife and my ex-wife are literally best friends. Wow. They talk every day. Pretty unique and cool. Very unique. That makes it a little better. Yeah. How old are your kids? 24 and 22. Okay, so they're out of the house. Yeah. Are they still sponging off dad? No. (laughs) (laughs) Well, one son's a senior in college, but yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, it's a unique situation. I mean, both my wives are best friends. We're we're all big, one happy family. And, it, you know, I don't even know a good analogy like the Brady Bunch, but it's like we all get along really well. Yeah. How did you manage that ex-wife and your current wife or friends? I didn't manage that. I think because I didn't manage anything, yeah. it ended up happening. Okay. You know, I married a woman. I've been married a year and a half now to Alex, and she's just a doll, just the sweetest, most giving, caring person in the world. She's a nurse. And my ex-wife has done a tremendous amount of work in the last five or six years on herself. And she is just a delight and so compassionate and loving. So there's just, you know, there's a lot of love and not a lot of ego in the room. And everyone just wants the best for everyone else. Nice. You know, when I first got married, she wanted the divorce, not me. I was extremely angry, extremely pissed. There's no way I'm going to be friends with her. No way I'm going to have a relationship with her. And I was plotting my revenge from day one. How long was that marriage? 22 years. Oh, wow. 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 Yep. Yep. And you were plotting revenge. Oh, yeah. How'd you let go of that? (laughs) Uh, Time, therapy. Psychedelics. Psychedelics, time, (laughs) therapy, seeking arrangements, you know, all the above. And I think slowly but surely, after maybe a year, a year and a half, I started to enjoy her company. And then it just got a little bit better each time. And yeah, we're very close. What's so. your astrological sign? Libra. Libra. I know not anything about Libra, <laughs> but I was guessing Scorpio. Yeah, if you would have said Scorpio. Well, she I'm on the cusp. Of Scorpios. I'm on the cusp. Okay. October 22nd. Yeah, so I'm right you there. You do not want to piss off a Scorpio. I'm right there. Yeah. October 22nd. And they can be vengeful. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I was married 16 years. You were married 22. When you came out of that. And had to start dating again. Tell us about that experience. I was a psycho, serial, crazy dater because I didn't want to be alone. Literally, she's like, okay, let's get separated. I'm like, okay. So I didn't really date because I was hoping we would get back together. But then once it was clear that we were done, and I remember the phone call. I was actually sitting right next door at Schmooze. Oh, we yeah. had a phone call, and the decision was made. Okay, we're going we're gonna to get divorced. As soon as that call was made, I'm like hitting the phones, hitting Facebook, hitting, signing up for dating Uh, sites. Like by, I think that night I had five dates lined up. That was the day we decided to get divorced. All right. What year was this? Four years ago. Okay. So 2019. Yeah. Before COVID. Okay. I was just, I'm trying to get into my head what dating apps were out there. Oh, it was, it was Hinge and Facebook dating and plenty of fish and OkCupid. There was a ton of them. Yeah, Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. I was like crazy. Where'd like, you start? I can't be alone. Just like, all of them? <laughs> like I was like losing uh-huh. weight, not sleeping. So I like, you know, seeking arrangements. I mean, I was all over the place and I just couldn't, I was in a full fledged, it was an outer body experience because I was married for 22 years. I was a hundred percent certain I was going <laughs> to die being married to this woman. hundred percent certain. And it was an outer body experience. I'm like, okay, I'm not feeling my body. I don't know what's going on. It's what we say in, in our podcast and the, in ACA, I was so fearful of abandonment that I I will do anything to hold on to this relationship to not feel those abandonment feelings. So I'm like, okay, I'm feeling these feelings. I don't fucking like it. And I got to change that quickly. How do I change it? Start getting some other women in my life Mm -hmm. immediately. Yeah. I can relate to that. Yeah. You didn't let yourself go through the healing process. I did not. I did not. Isn't Which that is, part of the healing process? Though? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I was in his shoes. <laughs> yeah. I went through a traumatic breakup in 2020, like r- the day COVID Arizona shut down for COVID. And the first thing I could think of was get on the apps. Let's get somebody else, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. In the meantime, I'm not sleeping. I'm losing weight uncontrollably. Right. I've got anxiety through the roof, but I came out of that so much stronger and not as a better person because I did the healing eventually. And I did the study and I did the work to understand why I was feeling that way. Did you kind of go through that process? I did after the fact. Clearly I did. But I think I was in such a state of panic that I was just trying to fill the void and the hole quickly mm-hmm. yeah. with another woman. So I didn't feel the feelings then. 
because I started dating, like serial dating, you know. Right. Even, un- even un- some un- of the women I would date yeah. with, like, would be like, I don't think you're ready. I had the, they told me the same thing. They go, you're not over your ex. So I'm yeah. like, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. This you're is rebounding. why I'm out here. <laughs> I'm rebound dating. Yeah. They, and some of them like, yeah, you're just not ready. And I'm like, okay, you know. They know too when you're not ready. They know. Yeah. Yeah. Before we started recording, you said you're a life coach. How long have you been doing that? I'm not a life coach professionally. I like to call myself a life coach. I've been sober 25 years in AA and I I do a lot of work in AA and I've been sober in ACA, ACOA for four and a half years. And I sponsor in that program as well. And, you know, I call it life coaching, fellow co-traveling, fellow traveling with people that have similar things that I have. There's no money being exchanged. There's no, you know, it's just like, we're all helping each other. Mm -hmm. And it's mostly from sharing our experience. We kind of feel like we do that too. We share our experiences and hopefully it's helping someone who's trying to navigate this sugar bowl kind of. What do you, what do you mean by sugar bowl? Well, you know, that's, that's what they call it now. I've been going to the sugar bowl for since I was like 15 years old, <laughs> which, which is I a, love, which you know. is a bakery ice cream parlor, right? Yeah. Across, across the, the street. street. Yeah. I've never been in there. You haven't? No. Yeah. No. My friend went on a date with Stevie Nicks there when he was in high school. No oh way. Yeah. God. I'm going to her concert. Yeah. Yeah. She's playing. <laughs> She's going to be here with Billy Joel in December. You're yeah. kidding. I didn't know that. I'm yeah. signing up. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. That'd be great. All right. So tell us about your experience on Seeking. That was one of the sites that you used. Yep. Signed up for everything under the sun, including Seeking. And I think it created a lot more anxiety. So I'm on Seeking. I'm on OkCupid. I'm on Facebook dating. And I'm talking and texting and communicating with, I mean, 15, 16, 17 women (laughs) at, at one time. At one time. Oh, my God. I oh, yeah. mean, and I'm getting an adrenaline hit. I'm yeah. getting this dopamine hit. I'm getting this excitement. I mean, it's a new drug that I've never even knew what was out there. And I'm just like, woo, you know? Yeah. And I have no idea what these people look like because even though they send you pictures and say, it's like, you know, it's not really you or it was you 20, 15 years ago, yep. right? Yeah. Like my picture. It took me like three <laughs> weeks to put on my picture after I was airbrushing and, you know, I'm like, this is me. And meanwhile, it's my bar mitzvah picture. You know, it's like, you know, I, I mean, love it. and I actually went on a couple dates where I'm like looking for the person. They're looking right at me and waving and I'm like looking around like, uh, oh, oh, you're my date. And like, same thing. She did what I did. Like it was a picture from 15 years ago. Oh, funny. You know, so you're yeah, perfect for each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're both lying. You know, <laughs> but don't you think there's like a reminiscing here, right? So you'd say you got you're going to concerts to see people that you performances you didn't get to see when you were younger, and now you're like, now I get to go to this concert, right? Seeking is the inverse. Those are hot girls I didn't get to bang in my 20s, and now in my 50s I do get to see them, right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the same thing, just reminiscing. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's mind, so he, he, he goes in different directions. But that's why we I saw where he was on. going with it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Go down memory lane. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you're meeting these people. You've got this rush. Oh yeah. And yeah. lots of activity. Yeah. Lots of activity. I mean, day to night, communicating with a bunch of bunch of women. A lot of anxiety. Not a great ender. So going on dates where I'm not attracted to the person, not into them, but just didn't know how to say, okay, good luck in life. And yeah. let's, I'll see you later. Right. I, I just kind of kept it going where I had no desire to keep it going. Mm. Like one lady who told me like, you're not ready to date. You know, she's an artist in town and I really thought she's a nice person. I liked her, but I had no really interest in dating her. I went on like eight dates with her, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I didn't want to go out on a date with her. Like yeah. I, I just didn't feel any Wait, sexual what, connection. I didn't feel the she, energy. She was initiating though. Like, Hey, she what was, you, yeah, that's, she was that's initiating. what happens to me. I've done that before. You didn't she, know how to reject them. No, I'm a horrible ender. And business, cutthroat. And dating, I mean, I'm talking like Winnie the Pooh. Like, I mean, I am just like, don't want to hurt anybody. <laughs> I know, <you> know? right? <laughs> I had the same situation where I met this really beautiful girl, but I just, every time I dropped her off, I thought, this is the last time I'm going to see her. Then come a Tuesday night, she'd text me, hey, you want to have a drink tonight? Sure, why, yeah, not? why not? And we end up going out like 20 times. <laughs> yeah. Just, what business are you in? A lot of different businesses. I'm in like venture capital. I'm in private equity. I'm in investing in different companies. Like just like I'm agnostic to business. So whatever I think is an opportunity. And how did you meet your wife? I met my wife through her uncle. 
Her uncle is one of my best friends, and she was on the beach. I have a house in Laguna Beach. She was on the beach in San Clemente with her uncle and her cousins, and I'm, like, getting ready to leave. It's 5 o'clock. I'm, like, getting ready to leave to go back to my house, and I look around. I'm, like, holy shit, who's Jim talking to? And I walk over there. Literally an hour and a half later, you know, it's, like, I'm, like, asking for her number. And and How did Uncle Jim feel? He actually was encouraged because even though he knew I was going through some debauchery and going through like the 17 girls, he knew what a great guy I was. So he was all for it. He was all for it. He was a big supporter of it. Now, has she been married before? Or no, kids or never married. No kids. But Third? she wants kids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does she know about your debaucherous past? Oh, yeah. She knows okay, everything. isn't that the best when they know? She knows everything. Yeah, There's like, no secrets. Yeah. You know, she's in 12-step programs and she's like an open book. Yeah. Now, was she ever on Seeking or any of those sites? No. 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 But she was on dating sites, but not Seeking. Yeah. You know, she's, I mean, she made, I think, more money than me that year because COVID came that next year and she was making ridiculous amounts of mm. money as a COVID nurse. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she had no time for extracurricular activities and supplemental income. And she has no problem with you being 20 years older, obviously. We're, ex- you know what's funny is we're 20 years older. 51 weeks during the year, but there's one week where I'm 19 years old. Oh, yeah. week? So I tell people it's the week before my birthday. Oh, her yeah. birthday's a week before mine. Yeah. The 15th and oh. I, I'm the 22nd. So there's a well, eight you, days actually. You're two I'm, different signs. <laughs> yeah. No, we're both Libras. Uh, no. Yeah. She's but a Libra. The cutoff is like the 20th or 21st. 23rd. Oh, it's the 23rd? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh. Well, I'm the, I'm the cusp. So the you're 23rd. The is a different sign, 22nd's the cusp. Oh, is it? Because yeah. I'm the 22nd in March, but my, like the 21st is the cusp or the cutoff. Yeah. So I was just assuming. Okay. I guess it's different. You're surrounded by Aries. Aries. By yeah. the way. Oh, nice. All three yeah. of us. Aries. Nice. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I forgot about Kevin being Aries too. Yep. Yeah. You get judged. By the way, when you tell your birthday and then they go, oh, yeah, Aries, they love a look. <laughs> you know? It's never like, oh, that's so nice. They're always questioning things. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about all that astrological stuff. Well, Todd, you get into saying that? that? A little bit, not much, but I have been hearing a lot these last two days about this full moon and how people are crazy right well, now. Saturn like is it. like closest to the earth that it is. You can actually see the rings around it with your naked eye. Yeah, there's been a lot going on yeah. because I, I, feel, I definitely feel the energy. And everyone I'm talking to the last two days are like, yeah, this full moon, you know, I'm yeah, like freaking out. Huge. I'm batshit crazy. And you know, <laughs> have you felt, felt any different at all? No. It's well, they there. said the tide was like nine feet higher in right. some place. And it was because of the moon was so close to the earth. And yeah. I mean, it, last night I was like, Whoa. Yeah. It's huge. Do you ever see that movie? Bruce almighty. Oh, I love that. Yeah, movie. When he brings the moon in. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> we had a sugar daddy guest on here who was named Bruce almighty. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Wait, wasn't that his porn name? Yeah, that was his porn name. <laughs> <laughs> he made like one porno, and yeah. that was his uh, porn name. Yeah, Bruce Almighty. <laughs> That's pretty funny. You know, you do one porn, you're immediately you're immediately a star. A yeah. porn star. Yeah, you're a star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Good old that's Bruce. That's too funny. So back to seeking because that's uh, and sugar dating because that's basically what our podcast is about. Tell us about some uh, just crazy dates where you just went, "What the fuck did I get myself into?" Yeah. So. I just, again, started talking to a ton of people. My only communication was through the app or they're eventually texting directly. And I had no idea what to expect, but like I was so out of my mind at the time because I was still in a full-fledged panic from the divorce. I'm communicating with all these different women and I'm not sure what they look like because they're sending me pictures and I'm meeting a ton of them. And like I said, I'm a horrible ender. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm talking to a bunch of them. Some of them are attracted to some I'm not attracted to some are like, just, I want nothing to do with after meeting them for one time, you know, or even communicating with them for one time. Mm-hmm. But I did start dating somebody probably three months after I started using, no, two months after I started using seeking arrangements. So I kind of like settled down and just focused on this one woman that I met from a, not Facebook, uh, Okay, Cupid, or one of the other ones. Okay. Plenty of fish. That was it. Plenty of fish. All right. So I kind of settled down and kind of stopped communicating with all of them. But I would have in my phone 
50 women and I would have their name and then SA next yeah. to it. You know? yeah, 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 that's yeah. important. Yeah. <laughs> very common, and you know, right? I actually came across one the other day. I'm like, oh, it's blank, blank SA. Yeah. I'm like, okay. You know? They're from Saudi Arabia. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I mean, I, have met, I met a lot of interesting people and a lot of students, a lot of personal trainers, a lot of people in the restaurant industry. I mean, all kinds of different people, like a lot of really cool women and a lot of women that like will just eat you for brunch you know they'll just eat you for dinner and uh, it just i was so fragile that they could eat me for dinner oh, and yeah. spit me out you know yeah and they can <laughs> smell it on you they're like we got this guy we got yeah, this guy totally. yeah this guy's um yeah you know, he's he's a whale right yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> you're listening to secrets of a sugar daddy hey guys do me a big favor and talk with our friend maria scaptura now, she is a PhD student doing research on sugar dating. The interviews are anonymous, they're unrecorded, but you can give her valuable information about the sugar bowl. She wants to talk to sugar daddies and sugar babies. Now, she did use some research money to pay for this ad, and we strongly encourage you to help her out with her PhD program and this research that she's doing. We have some QR codes on the website where you can go there. Or just contact her directly at scaptura at U-A-R-K dot E-D-U. And her name is spelled S-C-A-P-T-U-R-A at U-A-R-K dot E-D-U. All right, now back to the show. You're listening to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Have a comment or want to be on the show? Okay, find us at secretsofasugardaddy.com. Now back to the show with your host, Marcus. Were you able to identify different groups of them? Like I have like lonely soul, you know, <laughs> they don't relate to their friends, pure group. Then there's the party girl and then there's like just flat broke. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I would say those are good categories. I like good conversations. I mean, know. there was one that every ex was the devil and just incredibly hurtful and just mean the, the victim yeah. the victim. narcissistic yeah yeah that word goes around. and then i had some were the party girls i have to have the best shoes purse blah 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 had a look you know amazing i had some that loners i don't have any friends yeah lonely soul you yeah. know yeah lonely soul i actually went out with one that was a lonely soul she had these new diseases that were made up yeah like, i've never even heard of these things and she's like got all these diseases and yeah. can't get out of bed for two days i'm like okay you know so a lot of different categories. Yeah. Is there an age you won't go below? Young. Or, yeah, yeah. Young and younger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Wait, yeah. you were seeking out the young ones? Or? I was seeking out. The, oh. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think yeah. my cutoff was maybe 40, 38, but I was definitely in the 20s for sure. Well, I'd say the majority of the girls are in, on there between what? 22 and 30. I mean, yeah, some people, some women would contact me that were like 40. I'm like, what? Really? You're on here? You know, you're 42. 40, they're, you know. they're fun though. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But you're not there yet. How I'm, old do you think Lily is? You're in your 30s. Thank you. You, you sir. just made her year. Lily is 53. Are you really? Yeah. And wow. Lily is having unbelievable success on the site. Yeah. Just men throwing really? their love and money at her. Like, wow. I have girls contacting me, asking me to coach them. Yeah. I'm like, uh, that's actually a business. I probably coaching. Yeah. Plenty yeah. of mistakes, but I can tell you what I learned from them. Yeah. I mean, I think taking yourself out of those categories that we just talked about the lonely woman, the party girl, the narcissist, the shark that's just going to yeah. take everything you got. <laughs> that's I usually think, the stripper, I think. Yeah. 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 If you just become like an ordinary person without any, a lot of drama, I think that really goes a long way because a lot of the men on there, like me, newly divorced, haven't dated in 24 years. I just want someone to be nice to me and hang out with me and not take advantage of me and just chill the fuck out. You don't have to constantly trying to get money out of me and constantly just manipulate me. Yep. It's like, just, I want someone to listen and be there and hang out. And if we have sex, we have sex and you know, just not be so pressure. Yeah. How do you feel about cuddling? Do you like cuddling? I'm a big cuddler. There's a good big color cuddler. right there. I am <laughs> the a, best of the best. Yeah. yeah. There are times where you're like, listen, I just want to cuddle. You know, I it's funny we're bringing this up. My wife actually last night, cause I asked her if I'm a good, I'm from affectionate and like public affection and cuddling last night. 
because we have another friend who's not really into it that much and he's married. I love it. Like I'm just an affectionate, touchy, feely, sensitive guy. Same. And, you know, I love it. And we could cuddle and our feet could be touching and playing and cuddling all night. And I'm like that with my dog, my 16 year old dog, Gigi. Mm -hmm. I could hold her and kiss her all night long. It's like the same thing. So, you know, I'm very touchy feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I've got one of those sugar babies. It doesn't matter. She just has to have something touching me, her foot, yeah. her leg, something. But she just, she always wants to just like back that ass up and just yeah. get in that cuddling position. Now, she are you monogamous or, or? No, we're not exclusive. You're not exclusive. Yeah. But this is the one you might have children with or? We've been dating for over a year. Okay. So things have come up. Yeah. So. She's like my main one. The Date. subject has been broached. Yeah. I met her parents the other day. Wow. That was interesting after a year. Is there, if you're not exclusive, how does the jealousy thing work? You know, that's been a subject of many podcasts because <laughs> yeah. you fight it. But then as you become more comfortable with each other, you know, at the end of, if she goes out on a date or I go on a date, you know, that at the end of the date, we're coming back together and telling each other about the dates. It's a really weird. But what if you don't? I mean, you do that until you don't, right? I know, like, right. I have never been in a relationship like this. So this is still new to me, even though we've been doing it for a year now. Because I've always been, you know, I've had girlfriends. Matter of fact, the hard breakup that I had was we were not exclusive. And then when we became exclusive, it put so much pressure on the relationship that it just exploded or imploded or whatever you want to say. But it was the end of the relationship after about four months of trying to be exclusive because it just put a lot of pressures on there of before, like I'd see her phone, some guys texting her, I didn't give a fuck. But then all of a sudden, like when we were together, I'm like, why is this guy texting you? Do you not tell him you have a boyfriend? Well, you know, all right. of a sudden <laughs> these things started coming yeah. in. Here comes the attachment. Here yeah. comes and, the control. And I'm like, yeah. That wasn't me four months ago. And I think that's the key word. When you get that attached, that it's leaning toward love, then Jealousy is... Well, I wouldn't put those two together. I think attachment and love are the antithesis of each other. Like, it's the opposite. The more I possess and attach mm -hmm. and control someone, okay. the less I truly love them. You know, for me, my, my ex-wife and I truly love each other today. Mm -hmm. And Man, it's I, unconditional. I love a lot of people then. Yeah. Yeah. Lack of <laughs> it's uh, it's I, completely yeah. unconditional. <laughs> but when I was married to her, yeah. it was conditional upon her staying with me and being monogamous, yeah. period. Yeah, yeah. And That's now cool. I not sexual with her and I could give a shit what she does sexually and intimately mm -hmm. in her life. Yeah. Okay. Y you know, so let me ask you this. If your current wife said, you know, what would make me the most happy wife is if we were not exclusive, if we were non-monogamous, could you handle that? Because do you I love think her today, enough I that think you'd to want her to be that happy? Well, but I'm not going to do something I don't want to do. <laughs> so I'm not going to people please her to make her happy. But okay. I think today, if I decided that I didn't want to be a monogamous, I think I have the emotional wherewithal and stability to make that happen. To navigate that. To navigate that and not be jealous and possessive and create anxiety and fear. I think today I could do that, but there's been no other time in my life in the 56 years on this planet that I could have done that. No way. No chance. High school, college, after I didn't have the emotional wherewithal to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But today, I think I could if that was a decision we, that we both made. You know, yeah. Is it weird to be in a room with two women that you've both slept with, but each one has individually slept with you? Your ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> I think at first it might yeah, have been. Yeah, like, that's at weird. first, it yeah. might have been. You know, it's, it's like, yeah, he's got a really small penis, but you know, <laughs> it leans to the left, so it kind of feels good. You know, yeah. I don't know. It's like I, I think at first, <laughs> yeah. you know, oh, dear God, I'm at, dead right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think at first it was weird, but not anymore at all. Yeah. Do you think they ever talk about that? I don't think so. Absolutely, I would yeah. be very surprised. I don't think so. But it's funny, like, I don't know about you guys, but I used to be very concerned what women said about me sexually. Like, you know, oh, my God, he, like, you know, orgasms too early. He's, he never orgasms. Like, whatever. Yeah, you know, right, like, right. I was worried about being judged. Yep. Whether it was being judged my looks, my weight, my sexual performance. Like, I just didn't want to be judged yep. in a negative light, for sure. Judge me in a positive light all you want. I don't know. Fortunately, that hasn't, I haven't really worried. I don't give a fuck. No, I don't, part. but you know, I did get put I on the spot, it, right? Like there are phone calls going around <laughs> on my, about my dick. And I was yeah. like, well, I can't, like, I'm not gonna lie and say, I hope they say good things, but I'm very in touch with myself. We were trying yeah. to torture you, but yeah. you weren't having it. 
I, yeah. I, today I don't care at all, but yeah. I mean, for years, you give me positive affirmations and validation. I am like over the moon, but you bring me down. I'm like literally Linus just looking at the ground. But ultimately that's who you are, right? Like if you are who you are, you're not going to change. And if they don't like that, move along. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. You've done a 180 though of your former self. No question. Yeah. So what's the work model there? I mean, for me, the work model is therapy. I do talk therapy once a week. I do the ACA movement quite a bit. I've done 25 years of AA. I've worked with a lot of other people. And it's really getting to know who I really am and being comfortable with that and not letting other people decide how I feel about myself. Yep. And for years, dating women was a big part of how I felt about myself. You know, like I remember in college, I just, this, like with the hottest girl in Kappa, like had a crush on me and asked me out. And I felt like Superman, Superman. Three weeks later, she broke up with me and was sleeping with two other men. And I felt (laughs) like the biggest, I mean, I just felt, oh my God, I'm such a loser. You know, what did I do? And I just was depressed. And so it's like, I was a yo-yo. That's no way to live. No. That's just no way. The problem back then, it was hard to get a girl like that. Now you swiping, <laughs> right? Or, or in our case, we use our cheat code. We throw some fucking money at them, <laughs> give yeah. them an incentive, and the most beautiful girls show up. And all of a sudden, I'm at an event with like a gorgeous girl on my arm. Maybe when one just dumped me, so it's easy to replace them. Yeah, easier to rebound. But like you said, you got to feel your feelings and make sure it's yeah. like you're not filling that hole. Right? It's right. not a band aid. To- process an emotion that well, you need to process but that's also a curse is where i was going to go with that is because it's, it's so easy for us just to throw away something that we had and start over whereas before sometimes we try to work these things out or, or no matter what them. Yeah. yeah because you know in our day we actually had to talk to people and, well yeah you know, i go mean, to meet them when i dated yes yeah. i got married in 96 and dated for time before that so like there was no internet no you know you ask for Somebody, you ask a girl out, you get her phone number, right? right. And you call her, not even a cell phone. You call her home. <laughs> yeah, like I know, my, exactly. So my ex-wife, I'm leaving voicemails on her answering machine. Yeah. Like, hey, are we still going to Vegas? Like, call me back. With, you know? with a little cassette. <laughs> right. <laughs> you say, uh, a message. send me your pictures. And yeah. Like, I got to put them in the mail. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Postage stamp. Yeah. So oh would gosh. you recommend seeking for men, single men? I think if they can handle it. Yeah. You know, I think there's a lot of very sensitive, very fragile men that can't handle it. Right. Like me, when I did it, I was just getting thrown around like a fucking, like a bingo ball in that thing. But I think men that can handle it, like I have friends that do it and have done it that absolutely can handle it. They don't get attached. They don't get possessive. They don't freak out. They're just like, hey, I'm just enjoying it. You know, I'm enjoying the company, enjoying the sex, enjoying it. And I think that works for a lot of men. And it works for a lot of women. Because and it that, works for a lot of women. That, you know, it's, it's like a mutual guy. arrangement yeah. where they both are getting, it's, it's beneficial for both of them. But I think there's a lot of men and women that become too possessive, too insecure, too needy, and they become a version of themselves that they don't like. And the other person doesn't like. Mm-hmm. And they go down a rabbit hole and they start drinking more and they start isolating more and they start shopping more. And they, I call it the whack-a-mole of diseases of addictions and they all of a sudden like six months later they're in bad shape because they couldn't handle it in the first place right so there are some of those people and i was definitely one of those i don't think i would be that person today but and then i have other really good friends that are like don't take it so seriously either it's transactional or maybe you fall in love and you become exclusive but just don't freak out just take it slowly take it one day at a time relax and they're more secure in who they are for sure well one thing we're finding is that with this style of dating, it's easier for people to get to know each other without all the pressure. And people are falling in love. They are finding meaningful relationships because, as you know, on those other apps, sometimes I would show up and it's just a meet and greet, and I'm already feeling relationship pressure off Bumble. They're looking at me and asking me questions, trying to envision me in their life as a future boyfriend, me, introducing me to their parents, where the style of dating, that's not the, uh, <laughs> that's, that's not the premise. That's the first thing they're not going to do. Yeah, they're not doing yeah. that. Matter of fact, on the women's side, sometimes we do encounter that even on Seeking. Well, yeah, you do, of course. There's. So I remember asking a lot of women on Seeking, because for men it's different. You know, the men read all of their messages. The men know who's contacting them. But a lot of these women are like, yeah, I can't get to everybody contacting me. Are the numbers more 
dominated by male and less female? Or why do women like have tons of messages in their inbox they can't read? Well, it's a percentage of women. So just like on Tinder and Bumble, you've got the top 10% of the guys that all the women are swiping on. And the bottom 90%, they're not even returning the messages. In Seeking, it's a lot of the same way. You get this section of women who are having unbelievable success on there, but then you've got 80% of them who they may be overweight, they just don't, you know, they're not as attractive, and they're like, this sucks, I can't get anybody to even talk to me. Lily has no problem having her inbox full. She gets all kinds of messages from all kinds of men. Men from every age category and yeah, every even walk of life. Yeah, even 20s and yeah. 30s. But I'm completely off of dating apps right now. Yeah. Are you? Yeah, I'm exclusive. Okay. Yeah. But she met a great guy off of a sugar dating site. It was actually off of a different one. Yeah. And he owns his own company. He's a lot more emotionally mature now because he has been through some relationships and a failed marriage. I think sometimes we just got to go through that to learn how to be emotionally mature. I, I do think it's great training wheels for sure. <laughs> right? If you do the work, if you do the yeah. work, how long you been dating? Um, since March. Since, so six months. Yeah. Yeah. And do you miss any of the excitement and adrenaline that you got from the, you know, <laughs> the sugar apps and the, I'll tell you uh, what, we, we miss oh, her stories. Goodness. <laughs> Because there is an adrenaline and a dopamine effect there, that goes with it. There is, but it's also exhausting. I so agree with that. Initially, it was really fun, exciting, energizing. I looked forward to it. And then I just was really getting to a point where I was kind of burned out. And gosh, you have to just kiss so many frogs to find a prince. Yeah. And so I was real happy when I found my prince. Yeah. I would agree with that. It is, it is exhausting after a while. I'm like, like when I was like a serial crazy dater, I'm like, oh my God, I'm like exhausted yes. it, it, all throughout the day. You're like having to keep up and, you know, I don't want to lay anybody down and I might miss one and, you know, blah, blah, yeah, blah. But then you <laughs> see one of those pictures and you're like, yep, I'm okay with this. Yeah. Right. It's like, it is a lot of work, but there is a moment where you're like, okay. Well, wow. it's then it's that high. You're getting yeah, this you picture going, and you're like, oh my yeah. God, she's yeah. fucking She's hot. She's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. 80% of the time they show up and they don't look like as hot as in their picture. But I've actually had instances where I'm like, oh my God, like your pictures don't even do you justice. Right. You're so much better looking in person. Do I've you remember you said that to me? Yeah. I think you were one of them. When we first met. Yeah. You and were I was one like, of them. Damn. I thought my pictures were pretty good. <laughs> no, you were the rare category where when you showed up, it just, you glowed. You had like this just gorgeous look to you. I think a lot of it also has to do with your energy and your personality and well, yeah. your ability to communicate because a lot of people are so awkward initially. Oh, yeah. How many men, how many women on Arizona seeking, just call it? Is it skewed towards more women? Yeah, there's men? a ton of more men. So on Tons more men? No, tons more women. Oh, tons more women. Yeah, yeah. On the regular dating apps, it's anywhere from four to eight to one, four, five, six to one. Men versus women. Oh, really? Men yeah. dominate the... Men dominate the regular apps. And, wow. that, and the women just get overloaded. On Seeking, it's opposite. I've heard numbers of four four women to one, each man. Oh, wow. Four to one ratio. I yeah. would believe that. Yeah. And growing. I mean, the nice thing is if I open up my apps, I'm still on the other ones, and I'll swipe every now and then. Literally, I have one message in three apps, like Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge. I've got maybe one or two messages, and that's it. I can open up my Seeking app. I'll have 15, 20 messages in a, just a couple of days. Wow. So it's kind of nice. Yeah. It, you know, not having to chase and, and actually getting people. And then when I actually respond, they respond back. Or even people that haven't messaged me, when I message them, they usually respond back. Yeah. Because, I mean, frankly, there's a financial component. There's well, something you know, in they're it for only them. after you for your money. Well, sure. But, you know, that's what they say. That's the stigma. If you're a really good-looking girl with a good-looking guy, they're like, she's with him for his looks. And the moment he's not that good-looking, they're like, you know, it's the money. It's yeah. always the other thing. I'm like, hey, yeah. you know, give me a break. Yeah. It's the whole package. Have you ever gone anywhere and people called your wife your daughter? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's 35, but most people think she's like 26, 27. She, she looks, looks very young. young. Yeah. yeah. Very, very young. Now, did you grow up in this area? Yeah. yeah. You grew up in Arizona? Uh, been here since I was in fourth grade. Really? Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Went to college in Tucson. 
Okay. Pretty much stayed here ever since. I love it here. Yeah. I absolutely love it. I mean, I love getting out of town in the summer. Oh, my but gosh. But I yeah. absolutely love Arizona. Yeah, just... we're, we're about to hit our peak season here coming up in about a month, so it's going to be great. Go Wildcats. Oh, yeah? You a big Wildcat fan? I graduated from there also. Nice. Well, you guys are about the same age. That's true. Were you in a, were you in a sorority? No. I was in a fraternity. <laughs> I mean, those parties. Oh, wow. It's like everything the movies show. It's like just nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a dream for us, eighteen year old kid. So now that you're in your mid fifties, is it anything like you ever dreamed it was going to be? Being in my mid fifties, yeah. I don't know if I ever even thought about it. I always thought I was eighteen and going to stay eighteen. Yeah. You know, I never really thought what's it going to be like at fifty five. Just meeting you in person, you still have very energetic. You still have dreams. You still have hopes. Yeah. You still have. I still enjoy goals life, in life and get excited about life on a daily basis. I don't think about getting older and, you know, I just, I think half the time I really do believe I'm like 30, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. it's like, right. I mean, I'm going to play pickleball this afternoon with a bunch of young cats and I still feel like I'm young, yeah. you know, like really young. So I've been doing something a little crazy. Alejandra introduced me to this gym called F45 Yeah, yeah. and she, <laughs> she took me to the one next to ASU campus. Oh yeah. Oh boy. Um, I haven't missed a session yeah. since. Yeah. I go to the Rumble right next to that one. I go to the Rumble right next door. Nice. The boxing, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Girls that walk by our door into that Rumble. Yeah. I cannot believe how many girls are into boxing. Yeah. Yes. It's four to one. Yeah. Four women every I see all these really gorgeous girls walking into this boxing fitness center. I might have to join that one, too. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You've never been fitter. Yeah. 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 It's a good motivator. You know, I I just love group workouts. Like, I can't work out by myself. Like, when I'm go with friends to work out in those environments, and especially when they're a lot younger. Yeah. They push you harder, and it's like you show up. And Well, that was my point. Here I am. I'm jumping over hurdles. I'm lifting these weights. I'm still, in my mind, I still feel young. But my body is telling me I better slow it down or at least work into it a little totally, bit. Totally, totally. Because I see these girls just running circles around me in these exercises. But yeah. anyway. Yeah. yeah. It keeps us young for sure. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. It certainly does. I'm going to have to, I got a two o'clock doctor's appointment, but. Uh, All right. Well, again, tell the uh, audience about your podcast. So my podcast is, uh, again, just a year old and uh, it's called The Laundry List. So if you go to thelaundrylistpodcast.com, that's our website, mm-hmm. thelaundrylistpodcast.com, and you can get us anywhere you get podcasts, Spotify, Google, YouTube, anywhere you get your podcast, you, you'll find us. And it's The Laundry List. Yeah, good. Because I was listening to a few episodes on the way here, just kind of skimming through them to get caught up. And I, I was reading through your subjects that you cover. A lot of great stuff. It's things that we deal with on a daily basis. Totally. Yeah. yeah, opening up about your feelings, like you know, it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know about you guys, but like a lot of the mottos where I was growing up, it was like, don't feel, don't talk, and certainly don't trust. Let's keep these little family secrets going here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, our podcast is the opposite. Like, let's feel, let's cry, let's laugh, like, let's feel like we were when we were eight. We weren't allowed to feel. Right. Not allowed trust. Like, it'd be World War Three going on in my house, and the next day, it's like, we had to act like everything's fine. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's yeah. like, everything's fine, you know? So, you know, we're trying to like just heal and repair, which helps us in our current relationships today. Well, Todd, we appreciate you coming on. And if you Thanks ever for want us. to have us as guest, Lily would love to be on your show. Lily, we yeah. will take you up on that. You should go on the show, Lily. <laughs> Listen have, to a couple episodes. I have and lots of repressed feelings. <laughs> we'll, we'll get them out. We got a lot of tissue paper on yeah. this uh, podcast, so. Yeah. <laughs> all right well we're gonna let todd get out of here and i've got questions for kevin oh boy so thank you so much yeah, guys we'll talk soon bye good meeting you thanks you too you bet all right kevin what up guys real quick we don't have a lot of time but yep where are you and vivian at i have a girlfriend i know yep. her name's vivian she's been on the show yep <laughs> just serious. a few times yeah i was listening to the show and i was thinking okay let me project as if i'm Actually, not Kev, right? And I'm thinking, I never, I don't know this person, Kev. Yeah. And I listened through what Kev's life is. And I was like, this guy has it fucking made in the shade. <laughs> you know? Right. He's got a great life. He's doing everything he wants. He's got a girlfriend. He's traveling. And then uh, I mentioned in the text, you know, before I was like, I think I need a blowjob before I get on this show. But she's not in town. I know. Because so. we, we have a deal. Yeah. Because before we were dating... You know, I'm an engineer, right? So I was working on a flow chart. I put a little little box that said start. Why am I terrified to hear this <laughs> and it story? Said, Kev needs his dick sucked. Yeah. And then I put 
two lines, right? And then uh, she wrote, is Vivian here? Yes, no. <laughs> right. But no. And then she went through this entire flow, logical flow, which is, uh, I mean, I can't get into all the details. Something about a watermelon. A watermelon is, is, uh, is what I call a friend. Like the example is every time I eat watermelon, I love watermelon. And I think, man, I am going to eat. I, why don't we hang out more? Like every time I have watermelon, we're going to do it. I'm going to have more watermelon in my life. <laughs> And then uh, when it's time to get a watermelon, I'm like, I can't fucking be bothered to get a watermelon. Like, it's too much work, right? So a watermelon is not someone involved in your life. So I brought a watermelon over. Today? Yeah, right before the show. With Vivian's approval? Yep. Really? Yeah. It's a great relationship. Look at this guy, Kev. Look at <laughs> yeah. You, get, uh, you, get you do th- seem nice and relaxed You get today. three a month if she's in town. Yeah. If I'm traveling. Wait. It's unlimited. You, from her or from the watermelon? No, no, from, from watermelons. Oh, really? Yeah. And there's a little conditional thing there. How well do you know her? This, this, and this. And then if you play that right, you pick the right person, it falls into the spot where you're like, bing. Wow. Pretty good, right? Dear God. I had no idea we were going there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good life, guys. Yeah. So you're leaving again? Yeah, I leave Monday. When so, are you coming uh, back? We need you on the show. I'm just gone for a week, so okay. I'll be back the following week. All right. But work is going nuts, and we're traveling everywhere. It's crazy. That's good. Yeah. Well, we've got a lot of fun stuff coming down the pipe. Lily's been working on some good podcasts that are going to be released here soon, and then maybe we'll get to hear from Podcast Fanboy. Yes. Hear how his Labor Day weekend went. Now, this one, of course, this episode comes out a few weeks after that, but he has a special weekend planned. Oh, yep, he does. <laughs> with a sure does. With a guest of the show. Oh, really? With Miss oh. Katie. Katie, yeah. What? She's, I'll show you a picture of okay, Katie. Okay, great. She's been on the show a couple times. Ah. So they are going to meet. This matchmaker? Cupid? Oh. They, this is a sugar dating situation. Yeah, who introduced them? The, the podcast. Show, the podcast. <laughs> okay. It's yeah. Same here. Right? Yeah. Kind of, I guess. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, we'll see how things transpire. Look at you. You're coming up with creative solutions out of the show. We've got a plot twist for hey, sure. Okay. And then I know we got to go, but you talked to Kimmy for an hour. Yes. Oh, yes. Ago, and our audience wants to know what's up with Kimmy. I FaceTimed her two days ago because I wanted her to see my new haircut. Yeah. Yep. And she was in Hawaii. Good for her. She initially went there with family and then family left and she was supposed to fly back to LA. And instead she decided to visit a monastery and get some life coaching yep. on fasting from the monks. And when I talked to her, she had already been fasting for three days okay, and had just performed a coffee ground enema on herself. Okay. I'm like, please tell me she shaved her head. No, oh, I was hoping. she didn't shave her head. Yeah. But I was like, wow, girl. And so she's just kind of doing some transformational stuff, and she's completely 100% not doing OnlyFans anymore. Gotcha. Goes from making six figures a month yeah. to just abandoning it. Well, I think L.A. is an accelerator. You know, you get to L.A., and if you have something crazy in your life, it's like times 10 in L.A. Mm-hmm. You're probably like, I got to get out of here. She's been to a lot of, like, self-improvement seminars. Yep. She's on round three of something called, I think, M-I-I-T. Yeah, it's something like that. And she's also very much wanting to go into commercial real estate. She's taking four real estate courses simultaneously. Great. So, yeah, she's focusing on her future and her career and getting herself into a good place emotionally, I think. Is she coming to the concert? Yes, she's supposed to be, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, with you her day-to-day. Day. Yeah, day-to-day day with all of you guys. <laughs> She's semi-exclusive with the one, the of, billionaire. one of the guys that she met here. And I said, is this a billionaire? And she said, well, you know, I really don't know, but he has an awful lot of money. So I think he could definitely be a billionaire. Yeah. But they're almost exclusive, but not really. It's the one she met during Super Bowl. He's, oh, yeah. He's a billionaire. I know him. He's yeah, yeah. 48 yeah. and she's 22. He's super legit. Yeah, he's yeah. legit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to hang out with him. Yeah. 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 But she's pretty happy with how that's going. Cool. And yeah. Well, that has nothing to do with September when she, where next time we see her. And she'll be like, nah, I'm going nuts. You know? <laughs> yeah. 
Well, and I asked her, I go, so are you coming back to Scottsdale? She says, well, I'll come back to visit for sure because I still have my apartment there and nobody's in it right now. But because if this commercial real estate thing works out for me, I'm going to stay in L.A. Yeah, we'll have to zoom her in a few few times because we need to get updates from Kimmy. Yeah, she looked good. She's working on her mental and physical health. There you go. Hey, and when's Vivian coming back to town? Uh, I'm not quite sure. She's up uh, close, you know, buttoning up her old yeah. life uh, for the second time. The real time, you know. Okay. Like she's got stuff everywhere, different people's places. and. Uh, well, I had her and Angie on the show yeah. a few weeks ago. I looked at those numbers. They have outperformed every episode that we've had in the really? last six months. Well, except Podcast Fanboy, episode 100. His, for some reason, that one went through the roof. But theirs is the second best performing oh. episode. So there's something about Vivian people okay, really like. Here's what I have to you know. know. Believe me, everywhere you go, if you if you ever want to date a girl where every guy wants to fuck her and, <laughs> and blatantly says it all yeah. the time, you got to get pretty comfortable with yourself. Yeah. It is like fucking flies. Yeah, yeah. She does attract them, right? Okay, she does. so sh- you have permission to get sexual favors. Yeah. While she's in and out of town, does she have permission to do the same thing? I've extended the offer. She's not interested. She's really? Yep. That is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That surprises me. Those cult gals, you know? Mm-hmm. Get those one thing girls I know. out of a cult. Yeah. Yeah, I decided I'm going to figure out how far a woman can run in one day and then find the cult town and then just build a house right outside one day running from the cult. You can find the best girls. These cult girls are the best. <laughs> okay. Um, well, well, we leave it up to Kevin. My <laughs> boyfriend. Unbelievable analogies. <laughs> my boyfriend is ex-cult. Is he? Yeah. Okay, see? They're everywhere. He was raised in a... Crazy cult. In fact, his parents drug him all the way to Israel. I define a cult, uh, this cult, as speaking in tongues cult. Mm-hmm. This one too. Okay. Cool. And healing, like, yep. Bam, you're healed. Mm. You no longer have cancer. Yep. Nor need braces. You guys think uh, <laughs> Vivian and Angie are going to hook up? Well, we've talked about it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you want it to happen? Uh. Because I heard, I don't think you're that crazy about that happening. As a guy, you don't like to push those things. You yeah. know, you're like, yeah, if it happens. No, know. like with you or without you or both. Oh, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't. So you don't, don't care either way. I don't care. Yeah. Um, I was gonna buy Angie a red wig. Oh. I was gonna say. Well, Angie's not chunky enough. Vivian's looking for a oh, thick. Oh, she wants a thick red thick, head. Th- have you ever seen a corgi with a big <laughs> chunky butt? <laughs> She God. wants a corgi with a big chunky butt redhead or blonde. Oh, God. Yeah. All right. So you know you what? Go. I think that's a great spot to end today. <laughs> 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 oh, we always welcome Kevin on the show. You bring. Uh, I'm so happy when I'm here. You just bring different. joy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we would love to hear your sugar dating stories. And we're getting them. I am starting to get quite a few submitted through the website and through Instagram. So we appreciate those. I'm going to read a lot of those on the extra sugars. So keep sending those in. We love reading them and follow us on Instagram. So you can message us there and then you can see all kinds of funny memes. Hey, I got to credit Lily for half of them. She'll send them to me and then I throw them on our Instagram. I'm (laughs) in a meme group. They're pretty funny. Meme girls. It's actually not. There are some meme girls on there, but they just put the raunchiest things, and know, half of them enough. apply to sugar dating. They do. They really do. So <laughs> I throw those on the, um, our Instagram page, so watch out for those. And then don't forget to enter to come party with us. As Kevin said earlier, one person will actually get their airfare paid for now. And if there's any other sugar daddies who want to contribute and pay for some other airfares, let me know. That would be fun. Hey, this is to all the voluptuous redheads yeah. right. in the United States. Thank you. Yes. Get those applications in. There you go. Yep. And good old Kevin will fly you here. <laughs> What'd you sign up for, Kevin? Well, let's see. Let's see <laughs> where it goes. Huh? Yeah, we'll yeah. see. All right. Lily, Kevin, thank you. Guys, love you. All right. Love, so, until, kisses. <laughs> until next time. Hugs, yeah. rainbows. Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to connect or even be on the show, we'd love to hear from you at secretsofasugardaddy.com.